The World Health Organization has declared the monkeypox outbreak a global health emergency. So in short, we have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria in the international health regulations. Plus, the CDC has reported the first two cases identified in children as the number of cases continues to rise. We're getting more information on treatment and vaccines. So joining me now is Dr. Stan Derensinski from Stanford Healthcare. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. So wh what are the symptoms in the incubation period of the virus? Well, the incubation period, is, uh, we're, we're benefited by a paper that was just published in the New England Journal of Medicine of over 500 cases from multiple countries. Uh, and in, for the among those, for the information that was available, the median incubation period was seven days, but it ranged from three to 20. Uh, so there's, it's quite... It's it's quite broad. The symptoms um, most often start with what we consider a prodrome to the major abnormalities with the skin lesions, uh, and that really is sort of like a flu-like illness with fever, um, uh, achiness, malaise, headaches, and the like. Followed uh, uh, shortly thereafter. Um, by the eruption of the skin lesions. In some cases, the prodrome never occurs or the fevers, et cetera, may first arise after uh, the skin lesions appear. Um, and the skin lesions may progress for a while. Uh, uh, they are um, painful. Um, and in some circumstances where they strike in critical areas can be uh, particularly difficult. Uh, but by and large, the illness is uh, self-limited. Uh, the number of deaths from this outbreak have been very small and largely limited uh, actually to Africa, which uh, may not be considered to be part of the outbreak. Mm -hmm. Um, and in fact, in the U.S., hospitalizations as a consequence have been uh, uncommon. Uh, so it's a nasty illness, uh, but at least in the Western world with uh, modern health care, um, it's not often a lethal illness. Mm -hmm. So nasty, but also treatable. And also with that incubation period being so wide, it can make it really tricky to... Uh, figure out exactly where it all started. So now that you said so the symptoms have a wide range as well, but while we can treat it, how do you treat it? Well, we, you know, as, as has been said, we're, uh, you know, we, uh, we have no option but to think back about COVID and uh, the problems we've had and the, and the errors we've made along in, in dealing with it, but that was because we didn't know about anything about the virus. This virus has been known since uh, 1958. The first human case was in, uh, identified in Africa in 1970 in a child as part of the surveillance at the time that smallpox was being eliminated. Um, so we know a fair amount about the virus. Uh, and we have available, in contrast to what was true with COVID, we have available uh, an effective va a vaccine and effective uh, medicine. The medicine um, is called um, tecoviramat or TPOX, uh, which are pills that you take for 14 days and uh, appear to be effective. I have to say that uh, we have no human clinical trials with it because it wasn't possible uh, or readily possible to do those. But based on uh, other information, we do believe it's effective and the reports so far have been that people do appear to respond relatively quickly to it. The other thing we have, as I said, that we didn't have for COVID is a vaccine uh, on the shelf. Uh, although the shelves aren't exactly full yet, um, we do have that vaccine available for use for prevention. And Dr. Derenzinski, if you've been vaccinated for smallpox before, are you protected from monkeypox? Yeah, there is evidence that uh, 
Well, first of all, smallpox vaccination in this country, routine smallpox vaccination, except for selected individuals, ended in 1972. So if you're born after that, you didn't get a, you haven't had a smallpox vaccination. Um, smallpox vaccination does appear. It's been said that it's about 85% protective. Uh, we know from uh, experience in 2003 in which uh, smallpox was introduced uh, into the United States by imported rodents from Africa that were sold as pets and then infected prairie dogs, uh, that uh, the many people who got it, uh, those who, um, there were some who developed um, monkeypox despite having previously been vaccinated, but they had many fewer skin lesions than the um, than the people who had not been vaccinated. So I think that's good human evidence of, uh, of benefit with, uh, in that circumstance as well. Mm -hmm. And who is most at risk for this? Who should be concerned about getting monkeypox, especially with the high numbers we're seeing here in San Francisco? It's obviously a concern. The evidence has is, is been quite clear from the experience is that 98% or so uh, of those involved, uh, affected have been the men who have sex with men. Um, this is believed to possibly have originated, the outbreak have originated by introduction of mon monkeypox into some large gatherings in Europe, uh, with then uh, people traveling to their homes and spread, having uh, further contacts and spreading it. Um, so if you don't come in, into contact, into in intimate contact generally with someone with monkeypox, uh, the likelihood of getting it is uh, approaches zero. You mentioned that there were two children mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. who've uh, been known to be infected and there have been previous cases. Um, and uh, I don't know the details of that, but from previous descriptions, um, it's uh, children in the household um, who uh, who come obviously are uh, exposed uh, on a, a daily basis. They're hugged. Uh, there's other things. So um, you can see how uh, anybody with that sort of contact would get it. So that's where it is now. It's it's really uh, remar right now remarkably contained within one particular uh, cohort of individuals uh, and um, and who and attention, obviously, for prevention has to be directed at that group. All right, doctor, you gave us a lot of good information there for something that's kind of taken over our area here in the Bay Area. We really appreciate your time, and we hope you feel better with the COVID that you're dealing with. <laughs> I'm better already. <laughs> good to know. All, <laughs> All right. right. Well, well, thank you. We'll talk again you. soon. Bye-bye. And stay with CBS News Bay Area and KPIX.com for continuing coverage of the monkeypox outbreak and the local and national response.